My message to Arizonans is this. We are not out of water and we will not be running out of water because as we have done so many times before, we will tackle the water challenges that we face with integrity and transparency. We will not be running out of water. That was Governor Katie Hobbs pledged to Arizonans two weeks ago as she announced how the state would deal with the projected long-term groundwater shortage on the fringes of the Phoenix area. But the national media focused on a different side of the story. This New York Times headline is one example. Arizona limits construction around Phoenix as water supply dwindles. That take caused some heartburn for the people who woo businesses to fast-growing Arizona. One of them is Danny Seiden, chief executive officer of the Arizona Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the state's leading business trade group. Welcome to Square Off. Thank you so much for having me this morning, Bram, to talk about this important subject. It's very important. I mean, I wanted to get your perspective on this. Your colleague at the Greater Phoenix Economic Council, Chris Camacho, said he spoke with 200 investors, developers, business people in the wake of the governor's announcement uh, trying to clean up, you know, clean up on aisle six right. after that, in part because of headlines like the ones I just posted from the Times as well as the Washington Post and, the, and CNN online. What kind of questions have you been getting from these folks? Well, you know, first two things. The I thought the governor's press conference, which you played a clip of to start, is, is very telling because what the governor said at that press conference is, Existing construction, not impacted. Commercial development, not impacted. But somehow, from that, the national media got that Arizona is running out of water. So um, unfortunately, Bram, the national media's headlines aren't always as accurate as yours are uh, here, here locally. So we're, we are dealing with that challenge, the mis. Uh, perception that's been created that we're having a, a big water shortage that we're out of uh, you know out of water and so the kind of questions that we've gotten are you know what's the deal with this what's happening with the water in Arizona and we're able to say let me tell you what the real headline is Arizona is the only state in the country that can tell you that you'll have water for 100 years. No other state does that. No other state does a 100-year assurance requirement. So you come here, your investment's protected. We have enough water to build houses for pretty much the next 96 years safely. And you know something? We'll solve that 4%. It's just a 4% shortage. We use less water now than we did in 1957. To assume that we won't be able to meet that demand is crazy. And most people know that. Sandra Watson, the Commerce Authority, the Governor's Office, they've been doing a very good job reaching out in advance of that water report coming out, mitigating any questions, and that's made our job easier as we field questions from perspective economic development. Now, a lot of viewers may say, hang on a sec, I see the local headlines and local reporting on this. The Colorado River water supply is under serious threat right yeah. now, correct? It, it, it you know, I, I, I the, the way the Colorado River uh, allotment works is a little bit complicated. There's multiple states involved, and you know Arizona does get a share of that, and we have seen reductions to that, but we also just saw our wettest year on record, and Arizona has had to make plans to augment uh, their dam capacity. So it's one, it's one year out of what's been a 20-year mega drought. It, it, it has, but it does help keep things in perspective that that's how fast things change. One year we're hearing you know historic lows, the next year we're having to build more space in our dams for the retention. So are businesses buying what you're selling when you tell them about water? Because they're putting a lot of money down in this state, and they want straight talk. They, they, they are, and here's, here's why. Again, when we're talking about businesses, industrial use makes up less than 7% of our total water. Here in Maricopa County, we use 95% of all the wastewater that is recaptured. So we have um, a great relationship with the state and with the community when it comes to water use in the commercial side of things. But we also need houses, so it's important to continue that construction. And there is thousands of homes that have yet to be built that have already been issued these water certificates, and I believe this 4% is extremely solvable, Bram. I mean, Going back to your headline point, how often has the national media gotten this wrong? I could, we could do a whole segment of laughing about old headlines. That one you pointed out at the beginning of the show, I look forward to you know, reminding the New York Times of that 10 years from now, just like the Smithsonian, who 10 years ago predicted we would be out of water. Phoenix would be out of water right now. And yet, there are some real consequences about what the governor announced two weeks ago. Places like Buckeye, which has plans for hundreds of thousands of homes and doesn't have the water. That will have an impact on the area if, the, if, if this area can't sprawl the way it has in the past, cheap land, cheaper houses. It seems like those days are over. Uh, I, again, I think what the governor announced and how reports being interpreted are two different things. Existing construction plans, not impacted. We're talking about, if you look at the report, some unincorporated areas of Maricopa County 
are not going to have new certificates issued until they can prove up that 100 years, which is something that will be able to be done. So I don't think this is a slowdown. I don't think this is the end of an era. I think, again, this is an issue of the national media reading our obituary. And 10 years from now, I look forward to reading those back to them. All right. Uh, and I do want to point out, you know the water story well. You worked for Intel. Uh, Chipmaker uses a lot of water, so you needed to understand where the water is coming from. Uh, 100%. Intel is a great example, too, Bram. I, I, I just love to point this out. Do you know that Intel is water positive? They put more water back into the system than they take out. They do that through a wastewater treatment facility that they gave to the city of Chandler. They are excellent community partners. They are excellent on this topic. And um, you, you mentioned I worked for Intel, but I also worked for a, a governor in the past, and that governor invested a billion dollars into the, a new agency that is invested in making sure that we have augmentation innovation and conservation of our water going forward. So a billion dollars for that. Governor Hobbs has co continued that commitment. She even created a new water policy council that already committed $40 million to augmentation. So I think with the leadership from Governor Hobbs and the leadership from the business community, this is beyond solvable. And we won't be talking about this in two years. Beyond solvable. We'll have the video in two years to to check back. Let's move to another story that's top of mind sure. for cities, businesses, and economic developers. The governor and legislature have failed to agree on a plan to extend the Maricopa County sales tax that helps pay for transit projects, highways, roads, light rail. Tax was approved a, uh, years ago and the county okayed Prop 400, voters did, but they need to renew the tax. And I have to tell folks, for arcane reasons, the state legislature must permit the county to hold the vote. Yep. Won't get into the whys of that. Just big picture, why should the average resident care about Prop 400 and whether or not this tax gets extended? Well, first of all, I don't know if you, you, you know this, but we're sitting in the fastest growing county in the country. So when you're driving around and you're stuck in traffic, why the average resident should care is this is how we fund our growth. This is how we fund our roads. This is how we fund a plan to manage the transportation needs for this county that is growing at such a fast rate. So it is extremely important to everyone, not just the business community who needs it to, to help build out the infrastructure. A lot of times people forget, Bram, we're the youngest state in the 48. You know, every as we grow, we have to build. We don't have existing infrastructure. So thinking ahead and planning ahead to the future and being forward thinking is very important to all of us. So right now it appears the governor uh, last week was talking about going to the ballot, going to a statewide ballot to let Maricopa County vote on something that affects only Maricopa County or getting something done at the legislature because they're not done yet for nope. some reason. So What's the best option right you, now? You know, the best option, and I'm going to be uncharacteristically optimistic about the legislature. I think the plan that they put forward that went to the governor's office where she said she would veto is a good sign, and it shows that they can get the majority of their members on board with a plan at all around Prop 400. I think there's one of the very good reasons that you just pointed out that they have not adjourned sine die. They're in session until at least August 1st. That is a lot of time to come back to the table uh, and negotiate out a plan. Because the best plan is that the legislature refer this. Because if it goes to the ballot, it becomes very complicated. There's questions about whether or not you need to do two initiatives. One to go statewide to give Maricopa that authority, and then one for the plan inside Maricopa County. So obviously the best plan would be come back to the table, negotiate a deal. Um, both sides have a little bit more they can give, I'm sure, and let's get something done. I I can tell you, though, if this does end up on the ballot, it is of such great importance that my membership would back a governor's plan to, to fund it that way. But hopefully it doesn't come to that. Hopefully we can resolve this at the legislature. Governor Hobbs has repeatedly said she thinks she can get everyone back to the table. Um, and so show some leadership, I think, would be great. If it gets on the ballot, though, you could have a scenario where it's every county in the state against Maricopa County. And it, it, it's not a sure thing, is it? No, absolutely not. That's why I'm here when I say, you know, it's complicated. If, if you just do the straight plan, right, why would people in Pima County say, I want to fund Mar the, the kingdom of Maricopa, as they call it sometimes, you know? And we're a statewide chamber. We love all of our counties. But the truth is, Maricopa probably should have this in terms of good government. They should have the authority to do this themselves. So maybe it's time to look at that as well on top of getting Prop 400 passed. Got to end it there. Danny Seiden, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Bram. Great to be on.